Afternoon all. Let's do a brief overview of Fischer's game against Matulovic in the Herseg Novi Blitz of 1970. So Matulovic is one of the leading Yugoslav players behind the likes of Gligoric and Ivkov. He's playing black against Fischer and Fischer kicks off with e4 and we see a very exciting opening actually emerge after bishop b5. We've, we see a kind of king's gambit in reverse called the Schliemann defence. f5 and okay it might be tempting to take the pawn but then you're giving black sometimes the centre. This is another viable alternative just to play knight c3 and it looks as though isn't this a bit dangerous your knight's going to be kicked. Well this is all in preparation. This is a, a, a known long line of theory here after d5. White takes on e5, offering the knight, then takes on c6. So we have a very interesting position here with the queen attacked, and it looks very dangerous for black. If it takes, you can imagine check and winning the rook, for example. Black plays though queen g5, and so it looks as though this is crazy. If you don't know this opening, um, you should really be prepared for this. <laughs> g2 is attacked, b5 is attacked. The move Fischer chooses here is actually queen e2, so still leaving the knight hanging on c6. But again here it can't be taken really because you end up losing the rook. Black plays knight f6 and we see now f4, so hitting the queen, protecting g2. The queen takes that and now d4 and it looks as though white is gaining uh, development and squares in the centre here, check, g3, queen, <coughs> pardon me, queen h3, and okay, this is all theory still, but here I think is an innovation which Fisher had prepared uh, for a long game, uh, I think a whole night of preparation at some point um, before this game, for, for a long game, and bishop g5 is a product of preparation, and it's very very dangerous here now we see this sequence after a6 bishop a4 bishop d7 unpinning now Fischer plays bishop f6 and he's got the idea of a piece sacrifice so queen takes e4 check and after king f7 can you spot Fischer's idea in this position it looks as though uh, this is an awkward pin against a4 here so what can white do in this position? Does he use a check? Maybe you think it's tempting. So if I give you 10 seconds here, what does Fisher play? Note also that rook e8 uh, is, is dangerous at the moment if white doesn't do anything about that. 10 seconds here. Okay, Fisher plays the surprising move, knight e5 check. So he is sacrificing a piece now. Black takes, check, king e7, bishop takes d7, and okay, the king's exposed, but uh, white seems to be a bishop down, but uh, he has to has, have a concrete continuation here. He plays check, black in this position plays king e8, which apparently pardon me, apparently is inferior to move engines like bishop e7 when maybe if black plays very resourcefully should have a good position but uh, bishop e7 wasn't played there were some complex lines but earlier actually earlier it seems that uh, rook f1 check for those interested in the soundness of this knight sack there, may, there seems to be a technical improvement to play bishop b3 check first. Still leaving white with a technical advantage. Okay, but in the game's in continuation, we see rook f1 immediately. So bishop takes d7, check, king e8. Now rook takes c7. So it looks very dangerous for the black king and very dangerous for a five minute game. This is the kind of position which might be easier to play for the player with the white pieces. Black has quite ominous threats to deal with. The main one, queen e5, of course. Plays bishop d6, protecting e5. Rook takes b7, which unveils now queen c6 check as a possibility. Rook c8 stops queen c6, among other things. But it gives white the chance now to castle queen side, which he takes. 
queen takes h2 is on c2 if the queen moves away there from the c2 too hastily white plays d takes e5 keeping guard of c2 and getting another pawn asking the bishop to move and it goes to e7 okay and now can you spot fisher's move here if i give you 10 seconds starting from now okay fisher plays rook takes e7 bringing out the king he's a whole rook down here but this is very very dangerous queen b7 check but note you can't give black a single move for queen c2 is on the cards even though the queen looks as though it's um, off off side here it's threatening mate potentially but uh, black's in trouble king e6 check bringing the king up the board check 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 and the king is meeting its fate very very soon now check rook f4 check and queen g4 mate now this this is an exceptionally powerfully uh, played five minute game and it's in due part to preparation really borrowed from from longer game analysis uh, the idea of starting from bishop g5 so we see this st fairly standard continuation for the time but bishop g5 is slightly unusual i think knight takes a7 as has more often been seen in this position if we actually check this critical position here with an engine uh bishop g5 is coming up as actually the strongest move bishop g5 uh, if knight a7 i think that's that might be actually be a, a bad move bishop d7 um and the knight's kind of stranded on a7 okay it comes back but it seems you know black is is um about equal here it's not not so big the advantage technically so bishop g5 is is a powerful move to bear in mind in this variation um and in this position to to prepare you know as fisher played bishop f6 again strongest idea it seems but uh the one improvement here off the knight e5 check is mentioned by houdini dev 16. and remember this is before the time of computers that fisher had prepared this uh or looked at this with with, with someone overnight with, with other grandmasters I, I believe um not for this blitz or just for a long game but here it seems bishop b3 check and it's it's a it looks dangerous for black uh this position all these variations it looks as though white can get a promising advantage maybe best is bishop e6 on this brief analysis but even so white would get a promising advantage apparently so it makes the whole line interesting as an anti schleeman line if you're looking for an anti schleeman line with a peace sacrifice to uncork against an unsuspecting opponent then this looks like it this knight e5 check is a very cute idea uh, rook f1 check then it seems engines prefer bishop b3 and it looks as though yeah there was a technical defense possible with bishop e7 which again requires a lot of analysis so i'll give you the pgn of this game if you want to run through the game with your own engines and maybe try this line against anyone who plays the sleeman in your chess club or or that you might face the sleeman in the tournament uh, but it's a very interesting peace sack line which um looks fairly sound as peace sacks go the king stranded in the center the rooks okay are not doing much at the moment and it seems that um white has has got time to build up the attack uh after casting mobilizing both rooks but um okay here it looks as though well could, couldn't black have, have done something else instead of bishop e7 where, where can the bishop go uh, I think this is, this is a very dangerous position now for black let's have a quick look at this position if it was it looks pretty dire actually from the engine point of view if bishop c5 apparently that's a mate in three check here mate in three because of this queen is able to just come with the rook coordinate okay so uh very very dangerous position for black so absolutely lost there it seems from an engine point of view 
So in the game continuation, it looks as though the Black King swept up the board uh, for a final mate net with Queen G4. Okay, a rook down, but uh, the Queen and, and Rook are enough to make the King in this scenario. Not giving Black a single move with all the checks, of course. So that was that was one of the more exciting um, games, I think, from the 1970 Blitz tournament. Very impressive, and shows uh, shows off some of Fisher's deep preparation in various openings. Comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.